Hello everyone, welcome back to AS and A Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I'm Dr. Demi, and in this video, I want to show you how to calculate Simpson's index of diversity. This is one of the calculations you will encounter in your chapter 18 questions. Um, so I just thought to do a separate video very quick um, to show you how it works. And also I have an example on this video from the exam or from an exam paper, just to let you see how CIE would typically pose this question to you in the exam so that you're sort of prepared for it. So Simpson's index of diversity typically follows um, after you've estimated species abundance in an area. So after you've calculated things like your species density and your species frequency, you would then need to calculate your Simpson's index of diversity. And this is the formula that is used. Now, I just want to tell you that most of the time CIA would provide you with the formula, but what they will not tell you is what each parameter stands for. So you have to know what they stand for. The small n over here refers to the number, um, so basically the value um, in a data set, while the big N is like a total number. But I'll explain that to you when we do the example. So you basically take small n divided by big N, you square that, you take the sum of all of those values and you deduct it from one in order to get D. D is your Simpson's index of diversity. If D is, um, and D is typically between zero and one. So if your D value is higher than one, then you need to redo your calculation because you have definitely made an error. So when the value is close to zero, we often say that there is a low species diversity in that area. And when the value is close to one, then we say that it is a high species diversity. I also want to say that in some cases, you might be given two different populations or two different regions, and you're told to calculate or to compare their species diversity. I just want to say that in such a case, the one with the higher value is the one that has the higher species diversity. So if, for example, one of your calculations maybe shows 0 0.6 and the other one shows um, 0 0.3, the one with 0 0.6 is the more diverse one. Um, so just putting that out there for you. Let's look at this example from the textbook um, and then I'll show you a question from the exam, um, from an exam paper so that you can see. So here it says a sample was made of the animals living on two rocky shores. Ten quadrats were placed on each shore and the number of animals um, of each species in each quadrat was counted. And the results are shown as below. So this is for shore A. Okay, so this is one population and this is for shore B. In this case over here, the number of individuals, so for example, 24 here would be N. Okay, 51 for shore B would be small N as well. And big N would be the total number of organisms. So when you add all of these values together, you get big N. All right. So once you have all of that on lockdown and you know what you're doing, you can then calculate for each show. So this is for show A, for example. And for show A, you can see there, those are our small N values. And we have our big N, which is 1,107. And what we typically do is we just say, small n divided by big n so 24 divided by 1107 and you get you repeat it for each value until you get here and once you get here you then square each of these values so 0 0.022 squared um, that's the value you'd get i also want to point out here to students that usually whenever cie gives you values with three um, three decimal places Please also keep your answers in three decimal places. Don't by any means try to start looking for numbers where you go 0, 0, 0, 1, whatever, because even when you approximate that, you're still going to get 0 0.000. So just leave it at three decimal places. And when you've done all of that, when you've um, squared the values that you have on this tab, you've squared them on the right, um, on the next tab on the right, you then add all of them together. And so when you add all of them together, you get a value of 0 0.201. And 1 minus 0 0.201, as required by the formula, will give you 0 0.799. Obviously, this is a rocky shore with um, a high species diversity because this is very close to 1. You can try to calculate for shore B on your own and see what value you come up with, um, and then try to translate that. So this is a question from an exam paper, and I just thought it would be lovely to share it with you guys here so that you can see how CIE might structure a question in this regard. 
So here it says the diversity of some beetle species that feed on animal dung was investigated at two types of grassland sites in North America. The first type of grassland site was grazed by cattle and the second type of site was not grazed. Dung beetles were collected, identified and counted from two areas of the same total size. Some of the results are shown in table 8.1. So here we go. We have these four different species over here. And these are the numbers that we um, counted on grazed land and on grazed land. And for those of you who might not know, when we say graze, it simply means where cows go to feed. Um, so just bear that in mind. So it's like a feeding ground for cows. So the first question says, state the null hypothesis for a statistical test comparing the data from the two types of site. And again, I just want to rehash this. I don't know if I've said it before on previous videos, that when you're calculating any statistical test and you're told to state the null hypothesis, the null hypothesis is always that there is no significant difference between the two data sets. So in this case, it would be there is no significant difference between the dung beetles, the number of dung beetles on grazed land versus on grazed land. The null hypothesis is not an opinion. So it's not something you come up with by looking at the values in each table and then saying there is more of this on this land or, or less of this. That's not what you do. The null hypothesis is always that there is no significant difference between the two data sets that you are comparing. Then here it says state how many genera and how many species of beetle are shown. So already this tells you beetle species and you can count that there are four of them. So the answer here is four. And for genera, you just look at the first name um, of the species of the organisms, the first names. So here is Ontophagus, that's also Ontophagus. This is Canton, that's Canton. And so you know that there are two genera. Okay, now let's get to the actual thing. Um, then it says Simpson's index of diversity for the beetles on the grassland grazed by cattle was calculated at 0 0.521 using the formula. So again, they give you the formula. And in this case, they also tell you what each one represents. So this again is CIE making things easy for you, but some students still manage to bungle this and I don't understand how. All right, so then here they tell you, this is the total number. Um, this total number here is N and all of these values here, um, sorry, that wasn't good. Just going to redraw that so that you can see it. All of these values here are small n, okay? So when it says n divided by, small n divided by big N, you're typically going to take, for example, for the first one, you will take 6,641. So I'm just going to use my calculator here because I can't do it off by heart. 6,641 divided by 7,608, and that gives you 0 0.873. So the reason why I'm using three decimal places is because when CIE gave me the Simpsons index of diversity, they used three decimal places. So I'm going to keep with the same convention. All right. So this is going to be 0 0.873. All right. And then you have 774 divided by 7608. And I hope you're working with me as I'm doing this, um, just so you might get a hang of it in case you come across any other questions? So this is 0 0.102, and we can do the same over here where it's 108 divided by 7608, and that gives us 0 0.014. And so over here, we're just going to have 0 0.014. And 85, again, we repeat the exact same thing, divided by 7608. And that gives you 0 0.011. Please note that you don't have to add the total of this over here. What you need to do is you now need to square these values. So you need to take the square of um, 0 0.872 um, and you square it. I mean 0 0.873, sorry, 0 0.873. And that's going to give you 0 0.762 over there. Okay, if you square 0 
you will get 0 0.010. So that's going to be 0 0.010. Again, make sure you stay with the convention of the decimal places that you've been provided with. Uh, for some reason, I can't remember what this was. I think this was 0 0.014. Um, So here the value is 0 0.000196, but if you approximate that anyway, you're still going to end up with 0 0.00 and 0. And I believe the last one sort of has the same issue. I'm at 0 0.011 squared. And that again, you just write as 0 0.000. Now, if you look here, again, let's just go back to what the formula is asking us to do. We're trying to calculate D, which is the Simpson's index of diversity, and we calculate it by deducting all of these here from 1. So we've done N over N, we've squared it, now we need to sum it up. That's what this means. So we add all of these here together, um, and you can already tell that you're simply going to add 0 0.762 to 0. 0, 1, 0, because the others are just 0. And so you will end up here with 0 0.772. Once you get that, you then deduct it from 1. So it would be 1 minus 0 0.772. And that tells you that your D, your Simpson's index of diversity, is 0 0.228 and that's how you calculate Simpson's index of diversity and here it just says describe what the results um, and both figures for Simpson's index of diversity show about the effect of grazing on the diversity of dung beetles so remember on grazed cattle land on grazed grassland rather the value was 0 0.521 and on ungrazed land, which is the one we have calculated, so land that's not grazed, where cattle don't feed, the value is 0 0.228. So definitely the one for grazed land is higher. So you can then say that grazing has an impact on the diversity of dung beetles and the diversity is higher in land that is grazed by cattle compared to land that is not grazed by cattle. That's how you do Simpson's index. Very straightforward, very easy. And I hope that you found this helpful. I wish you good luck in your upcoming exams. Again, I can't promise that I will be able to do any more videos before your exams come up, but I hope that you're able to study and you're able to connect with your friends and your colleagues um, to learn better. I wish you good luck. All the best. Thank you for watching.